This video is sponsored by you. Grab our all-in-one bundle and get access to over 2 terabytes of royalty-free sounds. Use our code F2S5 for $5 off. Welcome back to one of our favorite locations here in Northern Thailand. Libby and I, we came already here. We recorded some amazing train sound. Today we have Greg with us and this is your first time here. Now his approach, how to record audio and sounds is very different than my approach. And I saw already when we got out of the car that your wheels were spinning. What were you thinking? I've recorded a lot of train sounds before. There's two things that are really interesting to me or important to me. One is to capture that sense of weight with this big heavy vehicle, like the wheels on the tracks and everything. The other one is a nice stereo image, so it spreads smoothly across a stereo image. And the bonus for me when I got here was this big reverberant tunnel. To me, that was just like, oh, I've got to use that somehow. Let's record it. If you haven't watched our previous video yet about our five hacks, this is now what Greg does. He does the cord around it and he dresses his tripod. But you love using the Lewitt microphones, right? Greg? For now, yes. I'm very happy with the Lewitts. I've had numerous microphones over time and I, I find them, the Lewitts to be a very good solution for a lot of things. I've chosen this microphone position. It's down quite low because I want to get the sound of the weight of the wheels on the tracks and I want all that sort of detail there. We're close to the tunnel so we get a lot of the reverb, far away from the platform so the platform announcements are in the distance. and. I'm hoping that the stereo image of the train going past should go smoothly across. One of the problems with recording trains is that you can't ask them to do it again, so you only get one chance. I'm going to use Marcel to walk up and down the track and make sure the stereo image is behaving how I want it to. Okay, Marcel, can you now go back a little bit further, just into the uh, entrance or exit of the tunnel, depending which way the train is going, and clap your hands, please. And when I give you a cue, Okay, that's fantastic. I know exactly where that is. Now, whoop, do you know how far away you are from the microphones there? I would say around 11 meters. 11. Okay, can you go as far the other way? Basically in front, of, in front of the little temple there. Of course. It's about here. Maybe a little bit further. Further? About there, yep. Yep. And clap. Fantastic. Now what I want you to do is just clicking your fingers, just walk at a constant speed from there to there. Okay, that was good. But what it tells me in the stereo image is that it's a long time over there, a long time over there, but it goes through the middle very fast, which means my microphones are too far apart. So I'm just gonna move them in a little bit. It's only a little bit. The detail of the stones under your feet is amazing. Yeah. So I'll just fix that yeah. now. So in this case, I don't think I need to do much. Just a couple of centimeters either way. My mics are facing forwards, I hope. So it's basically the same as AB Omnis, except the cardioids. So I'm rejecting this stuff from the back, which will be a lot of reflection off the train off this embankment. And uh, I get the low noise of the large diaphragms. Okay, can we try that thing again where you click your fingers? Okay, and while you're there, give us another hand clap. Yeah, that's great. It's still the same. What I've done now is I've overcompensated. My microphones, I've moved in a bit too far now. So I'm just gonna go back a little bit wider and we should be okay. Remember, we're recording a train so we don't get a sound check. Yeah. So I just have to basically guess what I've got. 
I might just angle the microphones out a little bit instead of spacing them. Just a small angle there, ever so slight. Now, this time I use a rock, you know, if the finger isn't loud enough, then having two rocks can also help, right, Greg? Yep, rocks is good. That's great. Okay, so now I'm going to monitor in mono because if there's any phase differences between the two microphones, monitoring in mono will reveal those differences. It's not really about whether it's mono compatible or I'm worried about people hearing it in mono. It's just that mono lets me hear things I don't notice in headphones. Okay, Marcel. Mm -hmm. So for those test recordings, I had my gain up quite high on the Nagra because we're just doing Marcel talking or clack, clapping his hands or clicking his fingers or smashing some rocks together. But a train is much louder and because we don't get a sound check or a test, I'm going to go conservative and bring this right down quite low, like that. And that way, hopefully, I won't get any clipping if the train blows its whistle or anything like that. This isn't 32-bit float, so I have to be very conservative with my levels. Greg set up his stereo set. Now let's set up the 5.1 kit. And I want to ask you, Greg, how you would do it. Sure. So where would you set the 5.1? Well, the front of it is an XY pair with a center mic. I think where I've got my mic is about the same position, like a good position. Do I hear something? Yeah. I think I hear the train. Good to hear a train, right? I think we have a train. Greg, you got it. We got to get the train. Maybe you should sit up on the other side of the track. Yeah. And away from that wall, because you're going to get a lot of reflections oh, into the rear. It's coming. Quick, quick. Just show go go? the mirror image of where I am. Yeah, on this side. Oh, okay. You need the sponge. Oh, quick, quick, quick. <laughs> go. I can already hear the. Yeah. It's in the tunnel quick, already. Quick, quick, quick. Go, go, go. Set your key up. <laughs> I do it. I think that was hilarious. We all expected a train, right? Yep, <laughs> absolutely. But it was a great sound and it's very different. And also very helpful. Very, very helpful and unique sound. And I don't even have headphones to monitor it. I think you got something good. What I heard was fantastic. And uh, it was also quite a surprise to see this <laughs> workman carriage going through there. But it's also told me my levels do not go too high, which is great. Um, it's going to be much louder with a bigger train, but I'm sure I'm going to be okay. Since I didn't have any time, now I'm listening back to it. Greg, do you want to listen? Oh.
Yeah, the, the whoop, 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 whoop sound, that's the engine of the train. Beautiful low frequencies because of the omnis. But the other sound is like a rushing shh sound, almost like a waterfall. And there's some comb filtering in that in the rear microphones. And I think it's because of this wall here. Mm -hmm. I don't get that in my mics because they're cardioid. So they're rejecting sounds from the rear. But here, these are all uh, basically omnis. They're right. Not really, but they're omnidirectional as far as they're pointing at the wall anyway. So it doesn't really matter what they are. So now that we listen back and Greg is a sound engineer, you hear the nuances that I maybe don't hear or somebody else who starts out with recording. And since our video is about field recording with intent, mm -hmm. we had a lot of time setting up your gear and here we only had a couple of seconds, but since we now know after listening back that this might be not the perfect spot, let's try to find a different area. What we've got now from this recording is what you might call a data point. We know this isn't the right spot for this microphone. So let's try a different spot. Let's do this. And don't forget the sponges. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, sorry. Okay, Marcel, if you can raise that up a little bit. So it's, yeah, that's about right. It's basically looking at where the wheels hit the track, but it's also not only where the wheels hit the track, it's getting a lot of this carriage as well. It's just over my head from where I'm sitting now. Maybe just a little bit higher. Yeah, that's good, that'll do. That is definitely just over my head. So we should get wheels on track, the undercarriage, all that sort of stuff. The wall behind us is a fair way away and it's angled. And the cone filtering problem was mostly happening with the high frequency. So that will be enough of an angle to hopefully deflect them away. Great, now what I do is I use Greg's hacks about dressing the cable. Whoa, that's a train. Turn your game back down. I don't need to. 32 bit? Yeah, but you know, whatever. Greg, this was the end of the train, but it's sadly also the end of the video. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it was great. I had a heap of fun. Oh, I had fun as well, but I also learned a lot. I hope you learned something as well, and we can't wait to see you in our next video.